Dear Steve, what a treasure trove of math has arrived this last week. Thank you for all your efforts to illuminate this dark corner. Your latest placemat proof from Rennie will make me review some complex analysis. OK, so there's the red placemat. It has soy sauce stains on it and a little bit of Kung Pao chicken. So this thing, by the way, that you're seeing here, that is the placemat. I don't have a good color picture, but Joffrey saved the placemat. And he used to show it to later generations of students <laughs> like he was unrolling the Dead Sea Scrolls or something. <laughs> year after year. I want to tell you about a fantastic teacher that I had. This is Don Joffrey. The story uh, of my friendship with him is a story of letters. We've been writing to each other for the past 30 years or so since I left high school. And a lot has happened to us in 30 years, as you might expect. I mean, with anybody, in 30 years of life, there will be ups and downs and disappointments and great happiness. And so that in itself is not the surprise. I mean, that, that's totally expected. But what might be a little more surprising to you is that in our letters to each other, we don't talk about those things. We just do math problems. We write to each other, especially about calculus problems. My wife, who is not a mathematician, Carol, when she heard about this, she said, this is wonderful. You have this, this great correspondence. You must know everything about each other. <laughs> and um, of course, I had to say, well, mm, not really. We, we just write about calculus problems. <laughs> and she just started shaking her head. And <laughs> she said, she said, that is such a guy thing. <laughs> So now, I don't know if that's the correct interpretation. Is it a guy thing? Is it a mathematician thing? I, I don't know. But her question got me thinking, you know, why don't I know more about my teacher? And why didn't we actually, why had so much gone unspoken between us? So much was left unsaid. It made me start thinking that there's a kind of a mystery here. And so at, at some point, I asked Mr. Joffrey, could he send me back all the letters of mine that he had kept? so that I could sort of do this scientific thing, almost like archaeology of emotion. You know, look through this pile, going back from the present, back 30 years, to understand what was going on in this relationship that kept it so, so strong through all these years. There was one time when he heard about this engagement of mine. He said, what's this ab about your rumored engagement? And so I wrote back, addressing it. Hi, Joff, another busy day, so I'll be brief. Here are some thoughts about the limit as n goes to infinity. <laughs> so the letters keep coming. Now, in my real life at that point, I was happily now married. And we rapidly had one child and then another child. And life for me was getting extremely busy. And I, I couldn't really keep up with Mr. Joffrey's letters pouring in. He was inundating me. His letters would pile up, and I, I couldn't get to them. I was just you know, sleep deprived. If you've had kids, you know what I'm talking about. And so I really felt guilty about it, and I would write back occasionally with some half-hearted thing. You know, He totally understood. He said, in response to my frequent apologizing, he said, enough already. In no way feel a need to respond. Just know that a moment of writing you is a very special moment for me. <clears throat> well, so in um, dynamical systems theory, which is the subject that I do, we have this concept of a bifurcation. You probably heard this notion that uh, a system's dynamics can change as you change a parameter. And something like that happened in our relationship around this time, around 2004. Now, what often happens in bifurcation theory is that there's a stress on a system, like uh, the force becomes too great on it and something snaps, like the straw that broke the camel's back or the, you hear about tipping points. So a bifurcation occurred in our case emotionally due to two things that increased the stress past the, the breaking point. The first was that Mr. Joffrey had a stroke. He, I, as soon as I saw the envelope, I, I was 
terror stricken because I recognized this kind of handwriting. My dad's Parkinsonian handwriting used to look like that. So I thought, what is this? And he said, eek, I had a mild stroke and lost all sensation in my right writing hand. And then he just goes on and he, pretty soon he was talking about Reynolds number and fluid mechanics. Then, before I could really even respond to that, uh, my brother, I had an older brother who died. And I didn't tell Mr. Joffrey about this, typically. And he had to hear about it from someone else. So he wrote back, I got a letter with the news that your brother had died. So this was too much. I, it was time for me to change, and I did. I arranged to go to his house and talk for once, really talk about everything that we never um, talked about. His son, everything that happened in our lives the whole time we knew each other, and it was a great day. I'd asked him for permission to reproduce all these letters. And he said, I'm pleased you're writing the story. I give you complete authorization. There were so many times that you responded to my questions about math, notions that puzzled me. My students came to class, and their first questions were, <laughs> well, maybe you can just read that. It's hard for me to read it. His writing got better. Did you notice? Those exercises are working. Look at this one. He says, Dear Steve, a friend told me he heard that radio show with the two car repair brothers. <laughs> you know what that show is, right? This is Car Talk. So he's heard about Car Talk. And um, he says, Someone called in wondering how he should mark the volume levels on his cylindrical tank. But he says in the course of the letter that perhaps the guy holding the dipstick can be forgiven for not knowing how to do the problem because he's not smart enough to know that he shouldn't wear his left glove on his right hand. 